Good day, folks. Uh, this is Bob from BBD with News with Views. A lot of, uh, I guess, three concerns with the changing administration in the United States. Actually, critically, how does the U.S. administration deal with us? How does the U.S. administration deal with Pakistan? What's the impact on us? And how does the U.S. and Biden administration deal with China? Let's just see how it's going to deal with us first before we come with anything else. And here, what uh, Chidanand Rajgata writes it actually be a pointer to what Biden's going to think to. This is about Obama's affection and concern for India shines through his book, right? He says, he says that Obama talks about a statement made to him uh, when he was president by Manmohan Singh, who said, in uncertain in time, Mr. President, the call of the religious and ethnic solidarity can be intoxicating, and it's not hard for politicians to exploit that in India or anywhere else. Important. And so what he goes on to say, so Obama says that he mulled over this line at time as PM and he says following his visit to India, he says he found himself asking if those impulses of violence, greed, corruption, nationalism, racism and religious intolerance that all too human desire to beat back our own uncertainty, our own uncertainty and mortality and sense of insignificance, I mean we should, we should our guys should remember this by subordinating others was too strong for any de democracy to pertinently contain. He's talking about India, right? And, and I just can't figure out why we think we are, I like these words, I mean, why we think, I mean, why uh, there is so much uh, subordinate, why, why we, we like to subordinate the minority, I don't know, right? And Casey Singh writes, Biden takes high road, Trumpism is still alive, but what he says, a Biden presidency means both continuity and change, the basic trajectory of India-US relations will continue, but its momentum will be conditioned how Mr. Biden handles China and Pakistan, like I said, right? Afghanistan and Iran. Trade ties would not be treated as Mr. Trump did by seeking make-or-break solutions. Climate change provides a new era of convergence, which Mr. Trump contemptuously ignored. But the Democrats would hold India to a higher standard of liberal democracy than the government in New Delhi is used to. Kamala Harris will remember the insulting treatment of her comrade Pramila Jepal, convincingly, uh, basically convincingly re-elected by External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar. India has an outstanding ambassador in Washington on a third posting there, having relationship with both sides. But then, as the BJP ideologue wrote, interests can outrank kinship or friendship, right? And right on the top, Yesterday, PM speaks to Biden, congratulates Harris. PM and Biden talk, flag, COVID, climate change, and Indo-Pacific. These are parts of convergence, as, as Casey Singh also said. Climate change, I think, we probably work can work in tandem. A lot of money in terms of renewable energies can flow into India. Indo-Pacific works in favor of, uh, I mean, we need to keep the Indo-Pacific going as far as the U.S. is going. And probably it'll keep going, right? And as he rightly said, under Biden, less acrimonious trade ties likely. Sticking points may remain. That's always the case, right? But, as he said, Jay Shankar has rubbed Jaipal and Kamala Harris the wrong way. So while he says Biden no stranger ties with US to continue Jay Shankar, but he's going to have to put a, pull a bunny out of his hat to make sure he kind of, uh, kind of uh, massages Kamala Harris's uh, uh, ego or whatever that may have been hurt and rightly hurt right but these are the things as is, as he said when we are being held to high levels of, of of democracy these are the things that are not going to go down well mp government to table bill against forced interfaith marriage this will definitely not sing well right this is another thing india needs to <clears throat> quickly find a solution to and this is not one of them unholy gut bandhan warns Foreign forces to intervene, calling Gupkar Alliance a gang, Shah says it, and Congress will bring terror back. And that's a kind of shameful statement, right? If we don't want to be on the wrong side of the Congress, especially the House, and this administration, and to a large degree Kamala Harris, and, and Bernie Sanders who are going to be calling Bishop, we are going to have to find a solution to Kashmir, right, folks? There is a there is a path available to us because obviously Pakistan by uh, by uh, uh, putting making uh, Gilgit and Baluchistan a province provides us with one uh, counter. However, having released these guys, 
if the if the activity if the political activity starts in Kashmir and the 4G now is important because that somehow is connected to personal freedoms. But we are there. We can actually put this to bed, but we cannot have this happen, folks, because this will again is like two steps forward and seven steps back. Here's another place I find extremely worrisome for our foreign policy is this Bihar one BJP starts Mission Bengal. And then you have Dilip Ghosh say we will turn Bengal into Gujarat. I don't know whether he means in terms of industrially or whether he means in terms of ghettoization of, 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 of the minority. One really doesn't know. But this is absolutely a slippery slope that will none of will absolutely not sing well, especially it's going to bring up the SCA and NRC. It will not go down well with this new administration, and we better be ready. And rightfully so, right? But what is going to be the big Kick up, folks. The biggest thing that's going to happen. Because in India, we are a casteist, racist, and communal society, right? And that is going to be our biggest albatross around our neck. And this is what, like, Sandeep Roy writes. And this is what's right. Behind Indian rush to find kinship with Kamala lies a dark truth. And what's the dark truth, folks? Let me just remind you, right? Race reality. The 1991 Meera Naya film Mississippi Masala showed how Meera's falling in love with a black man was seen by her family as a shameful act. North India's racist attitude towards anything dark, which is including South Indian, is is a is a absolutely an open secret. And as and as as this one writes, the dark truth about us. The filmmaker whose short film on racial discrimination is set to win a nomination at the Oscars talks about his journey. So when his latest short film Kala, based on the racially motivated attacks on African nationals in Delhi, NCR won the best short drama narrative at the Synquest. Recently, filmmaker Tarun Jain knew this was big. Kala follows the journey of an African student who, while roaming the streets of Delhi one night, becomes a victim of hate crime. And how much we've heard that, folks. The talk, and he says, the cops don't believe them, the government doesn't listen to them, and this despite the fact they are just students who follow the rules, folks. This is going to be our biggest impediment and a wall between our administration and the fact that now Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are probably the next president and president and vice president. So it's obviously open secret here that, uh, you know, and, and across the world that uh, the democratic dispensation has been softer on Pakistan for a long time, whether it was Obama, whether it was Clinton, and even, even Biden, who's uh, received the Hilal A Pakistan. However, what one should note is that the Congress comprising of the House and the Senate have more or less shut the door on all the shenanigans of Pakistan. They've seen through this, whether it's the Democrats, whether it's the Republicans, both have seen through the double speak of Pakistan. And so has Biden, actually. So where does Pakistan go from here? I'm quite sure it's not going to stop trying, as obviously this recent two events as uh, as show us what their game plan is. They pulled out their old book, playbook, dusted it and threw it out again as if everybody's going to, you know, it's, it's, it's a changed world, Mr. Khan. But I guess they, they got to keep trying, right? It says, the timing of two, two events that occurred last week, an intense exchange of fire along the line of control triggered by ceasefire violations by Pakistan forces and Pakistan's release of dosia with so-called evidence of terror alleged sponsored by India have led to speculations about the intentions of Pakistan's leadership. It is speculated that both developments were part of Islamabad's efforts to influence the incoming United States administration led by elect Joe Biden on the Kashmir issue and Indian-Pakistani relations, right? And here, what we have going for us as, he, as we have uh, 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 Raja uh, Mandala, Raja Mohan writes, he says, mobilizing America on Kashmir has always been a major preoccupation with Pakistan, especially after the Article 370. However, that Article 370 has been now negated by this act of Pakistan. Pakistan's surprise Kashmir announcement 
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan plans to award provincial status of Gil uh, to Gilgit Baltistan, a part of Pakistan administered Kashmir. So this kind of counters the 370 argument, which they'll find very difficult to get beyond. So it's basically what he says, it's always been about triggering violence and LAC, and that's exactly what we've seen has happened. Then he says, what is important, this does not mean, however, Pakistan has no leverage at all in Washington or that it might simply give up on the old Kashmir strategy. Pakistan, because it sits on the critical influence, confluence of the subcontinent, Central Asia and the Gulf. But here the Gulf, an interesting article, by, I'll jump to the Shishir Gupta thing. Pakistan, UAE ties come under a strain for stand on Israel. The worsening relationship with UAE and Saudi Arabia should worry Pakistan, which has for years depended on it. So we can actually, this is a counter to, to this argument that Pakistan sits at the critical confluence of the subcontinent, Central Asia and the Gulf. Gulf can be broken away immediately. Then what do we say here? Pakistan has long-standing friends in Washington. It sure does. The State Department is all goo goo gaga about, 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 uh, about Pakistan. But because the number of, now, number of soldiers, now 4,500 in Afghanistan, goes to 2,500, all the leverage that Pakistan had vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan with the United States would have vanished. And he rightly says there are so many other problems that Biden has. Biden is unlikely to have much bandwidth left for Kashmir as he copes with a range of domestic and foreign policy challenges, COVID and racism and everything else. He says Pakistan's greatest success in recent months has been targeting liberal American opinion that has become critical of the, of the state of India's democracy, the constitutional change in Kashmir and the CAA, etc., etc. Then it says... Pakistan hoping that some of the Biden administration admits formulation on human rights and democracy could be translated into US policy attention on Kashmir. Here we've got to force the mirror back onto Pakistan, right? They treat their, they treat their, uh, their minority pathetically, the Shias, the Ambias. They completely turned a blind eye to what China is doing with the Uyghurs. Now here, if we could just ensure internal peace with our minorities, with our, with, with, with our minorities internally and get rid of this love jihad, take leadership of liberal Islam. I think that will be the best counter to Pakistan. It's not to ask for, but it will be the best counter to Pakistan and China and to the liberal opinion that is taking shape in some form of fashion in the United States. So, it's this is the key at this point of time for India as we go forward, because here he says officials said Pakistan was trying to push the Islamophobia narrative in the UN, which they said was a thinly veiled attack against India to claim that India's diplomatic campaign against Pakistan's sponsor was little more than anti-Islamic stand. And this is the important part. We've got to show that they are anti-Islamic. That's the important part. And we got to keep going at them. As this says, Jay Shankar takes aim at China's BRI Park terror and link China to it. We further need to, to put a push behind COVID-19 fiasco. BRICS call for reforming WHO. Here, Prime Minister Modi should work with Biden to, 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 to nail China. And here's another one. Impaired Organ India slams UNSC on slow pace of reforms. And I think these are building blocks for India, folks which are important, which are the counter to Pakistan's moves in the United States, Jai Hind.